let's take a look at another one of these multi-lock C style uh, locks. And these got a removable core. This is a Magnum Secure Lock Systems. You can buy these on eBay from $20 to $25, depending on where you buy it from. Um, at that price, you would think that they cut some corners, but I gotta tell you, looking at it, they didn't cut too many. They still have the hardened steel body, they got the hardened steel shackle. It's an excellent locking system. The thing that I do notice right away when I flip it over and take a look is it's missing that um, inset Allen screw that allows us to have some locking, some uh, disassembly disasters. So if you're watching, uh, anticipating a disassembly disaster today, probably not gonna happen unless I really, really screw up. The body is secured to the core with two roll pins. You can see them right there installed at the factory. And on the inside, as I'll show you in a little while, they're flared off. So they really don't intend for you to take this lock apart to repin it. At this price, I really wouldn't expect it. It's a simple, well, fairly simple dimple lock, six pinner. And right away, when you look at this key, you ought to realize you're going to be having some problems. You got a thin strip down the middle where the pinning is, and we got some pretty good bidding on this guy. A lot of high lows, high lows, especially you got a really high cut over here near the near the uh, opening. So you got to be really careful of him. But more importantly, you see these two grooves on either side of the bidding. And when you look at the end of the key, you can see that those pins are going to be hiding in a valley deep down there in between two mountains of warding. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute, but that's going to guide us in terms of our pick selection. Um, Another challenge on this lock is this shutter. Now, unlike others, which move, have only one side, both sides of this shutter move, and both sides have a very, very heavy spring. Gonna be quite a battle to get by them, even with the key. You gotta put it in there and kind of jiggle it, break past it, and then it slides right in, rotate it almost 90 degrees, and then out comes the shackle. Again, we got some differences here. This shackle has semicircular cuts on both sides, it doesn't have a semicircular cut on the inside, which would indicate a ball bearing. So quite different even from the multi-lock, which had a square cut on the inside. This has a half round or half moon on both sides of the shackle. So this ought to be interesting. When you take a look, let me turn the key to lock him back up. You can see that there's two little locking bars that pop out there uh, that engage into those two cutouts. Now they are not spring loaded. So like the other locks, these are securely attached to the actuator on the bottom of the lock, which is located about right here. So we're not gonna be shimming our way again. So that's a pretty interesting way to, to lock up everything. So let's unlock it. And, oh, let me show you one thing, the rolled off roll pin. Let me grab a light here. If you look down in there, you can just see the roll pins on both sides and no screws or anything to do a disassembly, unfortunately. All right, lock them back up. And let's take a look at another thing. The big part of the battle with this lock is going to be this shutter. Um, because these are independent, I mean, not independent. When you push down on this side, notice he pushes the other one up. I mean, he, these are working together to kind of prevent us from getting in here. Not only that, this is a super spring on this one right here. So when I take my tensioner and I slide him in there, and I tension it, unlike the other C-style bodies, that uh, shutter doesn't get out of our way. You can see that, it, in fact, it really blocks still. It, he kind of levers up on the right side, blocking our access to those pins. So if you're like me and you have a you use Sauber, which these are basically made from flat stock, every time I rotate that, I'm going to be having to, the flat side is going to be pushing this out of my way, and it's going to be depriving me of feedback. So there's got to be a way around it. Now, the way I've seen people do it, you take another tension wrench, you slide them in there, and you lever both sides of it, and that will give you access. But then this thing precariously hangs out there. I've seen guys, you know, use tape to hold it in place, but I got a better way. Here's what I came up with. Let me move my tension wrench. I came up with this little guy. Uh, this is made out of a uh, windshield wiper insert. And all I did is I put a bend in it, and I stuck it in there. I pulled the shutter down and I measured how far it needed to go. And then I put another bend with a little angle to kind of act like a little clothespin to hold that down there out of my way. And we put that kind of pressure on it. You can see it really gives us super access. So a pretty simple low tech solution, but you managed to kind of beat that shutter 
All right, now we can put our tensioner in there, and now we have wonderful access. All right, let's take a look at this. We know that we have those two mountains blocking the center pin. So at this point, there's no point in even starting with a flat flag because you know that all it takes is one single pin and it's going to defeat you. So you might as well start off with your flag, your bent flag, to help you get around that warding. I'm going to be going from the bottom right-hand corner. Now I will tell you, I tried picking this using the old tried and proven light tensioning technique. This lox hates it. I fought with it and fought with it. It wouldn't give it up. And then I watched Lockpicking Lawyer's new technique where he was using what he calls gorilla tension on some high security lock, something that I thought was unheard of. And I've got to tell you, it works great. So I'm going to adopt that. Even old dogs can learn new tricks. I'm going to adopt that heavy tension. And in fact, when I apply tension on this, I'm going to try to do it in my hand here. I'll zoom in so you guys can get a little bit better look. I'm actually going to be almost bending that tension. Which there's so much pressure on this core. Take my flag, slime in there. And now I'm basically just going to shove them out of my way. Not a lot of finesse. Okay, that was pin one. Got by him with a minor click. I'm trying to get under pin two. Three. Four. Now when you have super heavy tension, like or gorilla tension, I should say, they're all going to pretty much bind, so you really just got to kind of force them. Okay, that was three. Nice click. I'm under six. Trying to get under him. I'm bought him up out of my way. Okay, that was two. Very minor click on him. Three is set. Four set. Ah, there's six. Try to get under him. And there we go. You saw how much tension I had on that by how much it uh, shoved over there as soon as I got it open. By the way, it is open. Here's the shackle out. Let me zoom out. All right, guys, these are not that difficult. They do things to defeat us, like these super springs on the shutters, and they give us uh, some awful warding, but just pay a little bit of attention to the warding, choose the right pick, and these are no different than pin tumblers to get into, especially when you're flexible enough <laughs> to adopt someone else's wonderful technique, gorilla tension. I love it. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Hold on, before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there. And for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lockpicking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.